So you're thinking about making a wedding cake. I won't lie, when I got my first wedding cake request, I was super nervous. Wedding prep can be stressful and getting the cake right can feel like a lot of pressure. That said, really I shouldn't have worried. If you follow a solid recipe and you stick to some basic guidelines for layering and stacking your cake, you're gonna end up with a cake that you're really proud of. You'll get a wedding cake that tastes amazing, often for way less money than you would have paid a professional. So whether you're the bride or a friend of the bride or heck, maybe you're the groom, if you want to make a wedding cake, I will walk you through making this one. There's a handful of things that are good to think about before you fully commit to this particular endeavor, especially if you're the bride or if you're involved in the wedding. There's a more comprehensive list in the post that I've linked in the description. Um, but first, make sure that you have the time, you have the supplies, and make sure that you have a recipe that you trust. That may involve a practice run cake before the real thing. Yes, that's extra work, but it's way less stress than having the real thing not go the way that you want. So let's get into it. When I made my very first like big, heavy tiered cake, I put the whole thing on a cardboard cake circle. I don't really recommend that. Picking it up to carry it was pretty sketchy. For stability and peace of mind, a thicker cake board, often called a cake drum, can really help. I did learn on this last cake, if you order it online, order far enough in advance that you have time to get a new one if it arrives warped like this one did. I punched a hole in the center of the cake drum so that my center dowel would help to hold the base tier on the drum, but that step is optional. So now you're ready to start stacking that base tier. Put some frosting on the cake drum so that the layers don't slide as you're frosting them. And also, when you put that first layer down, check to make sure that it's centered because that's a super easy fix right now and a pretty tough fix later. As with any cake, make sure that the layers are level and that whatever filling you're using has a thick enough consistency or is in a thin enough layer that it won't squish out between the cake layers and mess up that outer layer of frosting. As I add my next layers on top, I always check to make sure that they're centered and they're even, and I also give them a quick push down. This helps to prevent air trapping between the layers. I didn't do this for a while, and I had some trouble with air bubbles causing little bulges in my frosting when the cake was in the fridge overnight. So it's way better to just get ahead of that problem before you have it. So there are about a thousand video tutorials and classes available online that cover frosting a cake and getting the sides straight. For this one, I didn't get too crazy about getting the sides smooth because I knew I'd just be texturing the frosting anyway, but I did want the frosting to be even and the sides of the cake to be straight. So I'm gonna tell you what I did at this stage. If you prefer a different method, you go for it. Um, I added a crumb coat to both tiers because this helps to keep the crumbs out of the frosting on the outside of the cake. Then I added a layer of frosting to the top of the base tier so that I knew exactly what the cake height would be. And then I added the dowels for support. I just used milkshake straws cut to the height of the base tier. And then I added one regular straw, kind of cut at an angle in the center to help keep the top tier centered for the trip to the venue. So once that was done, before I started frosting, I actually put both cake tiers in the freezer for about an hour. I really find getting the frosting on the side straight and even is way easier with a flash frozen or, or like a semi frozen cold cake, or I end up taking too much frosting off, often when I'm scraping, and then having to basically start over. So even though I wasn't worried about getting the frosting super smooth, I did want the sides of the cake to be straight and even. Because if they look really crooked or wonky when you start that texturing, they'll probably still kind of look that way when you're done. So do you have to use the freezer? No. If you prefer a different method, absolutely go for that. All you're going for is a semi-smooth layer of frosting on both cake tiers and then chill them in the fridge for a little bit. And then you're ready to start texturing. So my assumption putting this video together is that if you're looking into making a wedding cake, you probably have at least some basic knowledge of frosting cakes. But in case you're on shaky ground where frosting is concerned, I'll link a video specifically on getting cakes frosted down in the description. This part does get a little bit long. I will cut it down and speed it up a little bit to save you some time.
So right here, as I was prepping to add the top tier, I noticed a little rounded kind of notch in the cake side and had to go back and fill that in and smooth it out. Now we add the top tier. If this step feels nerve wracking to you, I promise it gets a little bit easier every time you do it. Next, just take a little bit of extra frosting and kind of cover that, that little gap where you can see the cardboard cake circle at the base of the cake and then just blend that extra frosting into the texturing on the side of the cake. Super simple. And now we rinse and repeat with the base tier. Um, so a few quick notes on texturing the frosting. Um, this is in the recipe, but a little bit of corn syrup in the frosting will keep it from crusting the way that some powdered sugar frostings can. And that way the frosting doesn't get like weird and crumbly on you as you're working. I textured the top tier first before I stack, stacked the top tier onto the base tier. And I did it that way so that I wouldn't have to worry about messing up the frosting on the base tier while I was doing the texturing. Up to you, but that worked for me. Um, and then I stacked the cake so that I would have that textured tier as a guide for texturing the base tier. I grabbed my cake scraper and I marked guidelines at the angle I wanted on the sides of the cake. Obviously, I wanted the angle of the texturing on both tiers to match. That said, I probably could have skipped that step, honestly. It's pretty easy to eyeball it and it's easy to correct any mistakes as you go. And now we are ready to add the florals. For reference, I used pink roses, eucalyptus leaves, and baby's breath all artificial and all from Hobby Lobby. I can show you what I did to decorate. Like that said, it's really more an art than a science. And to my knowledge, there aren't any like hard and fast rules. I just started with the roses to one side and then used the roses to hide the base of the eucalyptus leaves. Then I filled in around the roses and the eucalyptus spray with more single leaves and the baby's breath. Then I added the topper on top of the cake and that was it. Any professional would be able to look at this cake and pick apart all of the details and the little things that I didn't get quite right, but this style is very forgiving. It looked good on the display table. I got a lot of compliments on it, and it really is simple to do even if you're a beginner cake decorator. So I hope this tutorial was helpful. If you liked it and would like to see more tutorials like this, please drop a comment and let me know. Happy decorating!